Welcome back everyone. Today on the bench is yet another amplifier board to review. This one comes in this box which is kind of squinched up. What is that? DN Zen Electronics DX0809. It says here CD, PC, MP3, MP4 input. Well, don't let that confuse you. This does not process digital audio. All it is is an analog or linear, if you will, audio amplifier. Let's see if we can focus on the side here. Specification input sensitivity at 1 kilohertz is. <laughs> well, it doesn't say anything. Okay, whatever. Max output power, stereo, 60 watts, 60W, that could mean something else because we know that you're not going to get that kind of power with the supply input of 12 to 15 volts uh, without some sort of onboard auxiliary power supply. Anyway, original tested one by one system. Okay, whatever that means. Audio amplifier, high quality and best product. <laughs> I guess I don't need to review it. It's high quality and it's the best product. So, yeah, go buy one. Shut up and take my money. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Ooh, here it is, the board. Comes sealed in a bag which I'm going to have to uh, pause here and find something to open this with. Okay, well, here it is. See, we have these controls. And I don't know if you can see that. MC volume, treble, bass, and music volume. Is that what that says? Yep. So are these microphone ports? MC? I don't know. I'll have to check this thing out. On the back has these standard speaker terminals and RCA input jacks. You know, this looks like a product that never made it into production. It just kind of looks like it was designed for a certain you know, case or something doesn't look like those regular boards that you you buy. On the back here we have a really decent sized heat sink. So that's looking good so far. I guess I need to uh, look up this TDA chip and see what it's all about. I'll be right back. Okay, found the data sheet of this chip. And it's saying that it's a 15 watt per channel at 8 ohms, 18 volt supply, BTL. Just means it's bridged. Here's the distortion. 8 ohm loads, 1 kilohertz. Pretty low. It's below 0.1. Then it goes up when it starts to clip showing different supply voltages. This amplifier chip is designed for 8 ohm loads only so you don't want to use this with 4 ohm loads. Here is the distortion burst frequency and it's not that great at lower frequencies. You can see here at 20 Hertz it's up around 1% distortion and it dips really low and then it goes back up at higher frequencies. So yeah, in the important part of the spectrum the distortion is pretty low but it does get pretty high. So I wouldn't consider it hi-fi. I removed the heat sink from the board. I'm just curious to see if they had the metal pad of the IC facing the heat sink or facing down. Usually it's on the other side, but it's okay. I can see the metal 
pad there. That would be a complete fail if they didn't do it that way, but that looks okay. Okay, hooked up to the music player. Got the speakers and power hooked up. And we have it going on the power supply at 12 volts. Sitting idle, it's drawing only 40 milliamps, so that's not too bad. So what I'll do here is uh, record the music through the music player, or the uh, little uh, PCM sound recorder through the speakers here. sound quality it sounds fine to me it does seem a little compressed when you crank the volume up I don't notice any significant noise or anything like that sitting idle here so it's, that's good it's not a real noisy amplifier interesting thing with this amplifier if I turn the volume control all the way down I still get output It's not a lifted ground. I'm not getting that weird mono cancellation effect when the ground is lifted on the volume control or on the input. It just collapses to mono and then as I turn it up I get more stereo effect. Kind of strange. Uh, well the tone controls do work. You noticed I was adjusting them when I recorded the clip. Next I'll take a look at this uh, mic input thing, see what that's all about. And here is the mic segment. I had this video all shot and done, loaded into the video editor, and no mic segment. I didn't remember to record the mic segment. Super D duper. But anyway, so I plugged a microphone in. Testing, testing, check, check, check. And yes, it works just fine. Little microphone thing here. So what we have is two mic inputs. They're both mono. It's not left and right. It's mono on each side. And they just mix together. And you have the control, turn it down, turn it up. And the uh, bass and treble do function this does not work. This is for the audio input. So you can mix the microphone and the sound level in together. So yeah, it's kind of like a rudimentary mixer, PA thing, or karaoke, whatever. So yeah, that seems to work just fine. Okay, so now I've hooked up the 8 ohm loads to the output and we'll put some signals in there and get some power measurements. And get this set up here and focused. And we'll measure the signal. There's clipping. Yeah, it's kind of got like a... Uh, it is kind of compressed before it actually hits clipping. Maybe it's like a soft clipping effect, I guess. I don't know. It's probably why it sounded a little compressed when it was turned up loud. So, well, I'll just measure power at the actual clipping point. Right about there. Looks like there's a touch of oscillation, too. Very small amount at the peaks. 
volts RMS. So I'll square that and divide it by eight. 4.1 watts. And we're running at 12 volt supply. So I will uh, get some more measurements and come back with the results. Okay, we'll take a look at the distortion here. So we have our 1 kilohertz fundamental, 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal at 1% of the fundamental. And we are getting a second order harmonic in the signal. Let's see if we can tune that out. Okay, that's clipping. I turn it down. And we get a little uh, fourth order harmonic right there. It pops up as I turn it down, but this one really never goes away. Maybe a little bit there. And back up to clipping. Yeah, it's a little disconcerting to see that in a solid state integrated circuit amplifier. It really should be pretty clean. Okay, well move on to uh, frequency response. Alright, we're taking a look at the 10 Hertz to 100 Hertz sweep and we're 20 right there and it is rolled off. Well, you know something, I gotta make sure these tone controls are flat. I have them set flat. They may not respond perfectly. Okay, it recycled. Yeah, the uh, frequency response with the tone controls flat is yeah, it's not that great. The bass is rolled off quite a bit. 5 dB maybe. Let's check the uh, 20 to 20 kilohertz response. Okay, 20 to 20 kilohertz response. and it recycled. So the higher frequencies are pretty flat. It's just under 100 hertz and it starts to roll off. So it could be a tone control design issue or input coupling capacitor is not of the proper value or something like that. But bass response is a little weak on this thing. And listening to the uh, output from the speakers that uh, does seem a little weaker than it should be. Here is the results of the power test. 12 volts we got 14.14. 13 volt supply we got 5.04. 14 volt supply 5.33 and at 15 volts 6.44. Seems a little bit weak. I would expect at 15 volts with an 8 ohm load to be getting 8 or 9 watts of output you know from a bridge type amplifier. Now like I said this chip is not meant for 4 ohm loads. Peak current is 2 amps. It's just not designed to handle 4 ohm loads so I'm not going to even bother testing that because it'll just struggle, I'm sure. As far as distortion goes, I checked across the frequency band and there is some harmonics that show up all across the band, so a little bit disappointed there. Not real thrilled with the uh, sound at louder volumes. It does seem to have a compressed sound to it. I listened at 12 volts. Running it at 15 volts will give you some more headroom, but it does give you decent volume and um, at lower volumes, it certainly doesn't sound distorted. Little board cost $9.60. Like I said before, it draws 40 milliamps on standby current. So uh, not too bad there. Now the board is really meant to go into a case. You can see these terminals are a little bit flapping in the breeze, as Dave over on EEV blog would say because there are screw holes there that's meant to be uh, attached to a case. 
The heat sink is pretty generous. It's very good. Tone controls seem to work okay. And uh, has microphone inputs. Two of them. A microphone volume control. So it's like a little PA or some sort of little karaoke machine amplifier board or something like that. So you might have some potential for using it in applications such as that. I got an email from Banggood. They, the person I work with wasn't that thrilled with my other reviews. Well, that one review, I, you know, I didn't think the amplifier was very good. And like I say, I call it as I see it. I don't know if I'll get any more boards or products from them if I don't give a lot of favorable reviews, but you know, that's not what I'm about. I call it as I see it. And well, that, that Breeze audio amplifier I tested earlier was very, very good. I like that. But just the last three amp boards I got, I'm not real thrilled with them. You know, it's unfortunately, like it says here on the box, high quality board and best product. Well, like it says here on the amplifier, okay audio amp. I'd just say it's okay. I, uh, distortion's not that good. It has that wonky issue with the volume control. But it does have the microphone inputs if you want to use it as a karaoke type amplifier or PA or something like that. It has that capability. Well, I guess that's about all I have to say on this board. Hope you liked the video, and thanks for watching.